1. Which of the following indicates a state of hyperventilation? A. An adult respiratory rate greater than 20 per minute. B. A tidal volume of less than 400 milliliters. C. An oxygen saturation greater than 94%. D. An N tidal carbon dioxide level less than 30 millimeters of mercury. Two, which of the following mechanisms of injury does not commonly cause damage to the spinal cord? A. Hyperextension B. Hyperflexion C. Lateral stress D. Compression Three. A 54-year-old male is involved in a motor vehicle collision. The steering wheel is bent. During your initial assessment, you note his skin is pale, radial pulses are present, and breath sounds are clear. The patient is tender over his sternum and complains of chest pain. Which intrathoracic injury should you suspect given the above findings? A. Cardiac contusion. B. Traumatic aortic rupture. C. Flail chest. D. Tension pneumothorax. Four. Prolonged seeing times may reflect. A. A decrease in death rates. B. Delivery of better care. C. Accomplishment of interventions. D. Ineffective team collaboration. Five, when performing the International Trauma Life Support ITLS primary survey, the team leader may minimize errors by A. Performing all interventions. B. Limiting crew roles. C. Permitting the crew to continue the assessment. D. Delegating interventions. Six, you have placed a nasopharyngeal airway, NPA in your patient and now observe mild hemorrhage from the nares. You should A. Immediately remove the NPA and pack the nose with gauze. B. Immediately remove the NPA and reinsert it on the opposite nares. C. Leave the NPA in place so as not to disturb the clot or reactivate bleeding. D. Contact medical control as an NPA will not cause hemorrhage. Seven. Which of the following is considered one of the four essential components to maintain normal perfusion? A. Serum lactate levels. B. ETCO2 levels. C. SAO2 levels. D. Fluid levels. Eight. Which of the following assessment findings is associated with neurogenic shock? A. Increased pulse and cool, clammy skin. B. Increased pulse, normal skin color, and temperature. C. Decreased pulse and cool, clammy skin. D. Decreased pulse, normal skin color, and temperature. Nine. In a rear impact motor vehicle crash, which area of the spine is most susceptible to injury? A. Cervical B. Thoracic C. 
C. Lumbar. D. Sacral coccygeal. Ten, a 27-year-old male with blunt chest trauma from a motor vehicle collision was successfully intubated at the scene. While ventilating the patient, you note resistance with an absence of right chest wall movement. You should suspect a a flail chest, b gastric distension. C. Mucus obstruction. D. Tension pneumothorax. Eleven. As intracerebral pressure rises after an isolated head injury, what does the systolic blood pressure do? A. Stays the same. B. Decreases. C. Increases. D. Changes randomly. Twelve. What is the most frequent cause for an intubated trauma patient to develop poor lung compliance while being ventilated? A. Tracheal extubation. B. Pericardial tamponade. C. Gastric distension. D. Tension pneumothorax. 13. A 56 year old male sustains a gunshot wound to the abdomen. Vital signs are BP 74 over 32, P 136 present only at the carotid, and are 24 and shallow. The target of fluid resuscitation is A. Return of peripheral pulses B. Maintenance of central pulses C. Systolic blood pressure of 110 to 120 D. Pulse rate of 100 14. Hemostatic agents applied directly to the source of bleeding must be used in conjunction with A. Direct pressure to the wound B. Tourniquets proximal to the wound C. Pressure points to arteries proximal to the wound D. Elevation of the wound above the level of the heart Fifteen, a pericardiosynthesis is performed to A. To remove fluid from the lining around the lungs B. To remove fluid from the lining around the heart C. To inject medications directly into the heart D. To monitor stroke volume Sixteen. Which of the following findings would not make a patient difficult to ventilate with a bag valve mask? A. Beard. B. Obesity. C. Elderly patient. D. Multiple nose piercings. Seventeen. A 36-year-old male sustains blunt force thoracic trauma and fits the criteria for a load and go patient. Which of the following should be performed on the scene? A. Obtain an ECG. B. Establish vascular access. C. Obtain a finger stick serum lactate level. D. Assess for other potentially life-threatening conditions. 18. Routine use of hyperventilation in the traumatic brain injury, TBI patient will A. 
cause vasoconstriction and increase cerebral ischemia. B. Cause vasodilation and decreased intracranial pressure, ICP. C. Cause an increase of end tidal CO2. D. Cause peripheral hypoxia and cyanosis. Nineteen. The use of external laryngeal manipulation. A. Decreases the risk of airway trauma. B. Reduces gastric distension. C. Improves glottic visualization. D. Causes aspiration. Twenty. A 34-year-old man has a gunshot wound to the right groin area. Arterial bleeding, which cannot be controlled with direct pressure or a tourniquet, is coming from the wound. The patient appears confused, diaphoretic and has weak peripheral pulses. What is the appropriate fluid resuscitation regimen for this patient? A. Intravenous fluid at a keep open rate. B. Intravenous fluid gives enough fluid to maintain peripheral pulses. C. Intravenous fluid at a wide open rate. D. No intravenous access should be established in this situation. ITLS Practice Test International Trauma Life Support, ITLS provides essential training for healthcare professionals to master trauma response, covering situations from accidents to natural disasters. Courses emphasize skills like rapid assessment, airway management, and hemorrhage control to prepare for critical situations. Benefits of Training in Trauma Response Trauma life support training enhances emergency response skills, emphasizing teamwork and communication in high-stakes situations. Widely recognized, this training also opens doors for career advancement in trauma care and emergency services. ITLS Certification Completing an ITLS course not only enhances trauma response skills but also provides globally recognized credentials. This certification validates expertise in critical care, showcasing a healthcare professional's commitment to patient safety and leadership in trauma response.